What's it like working with the man? I loved it. Um, it was exciting. It was um, always interesting. He was always respectful to me. I know he has some reputation based on the mainstream media that he's this, that, or the other thing, but I kept think in the 20 years I worked for him in the private sector before the three at the White House, I can think of one disagreement that we had together, which says a lot. Um, he is creative always interested in hearing from people. I know sometimes the press would like to say, oh, he asks different people different things. And that's how he learns. So for example, I remember one time very early in my career there, I was a lawyer working on a deal. I gave him the deal points and he wanted to speak to somebody who was running the building, like an operations person about a particular issue. And at first I was surprised, but then I realized, but that makes a lot of sense. What do I know about, I think the, the issue was, the foot traffic in the building, both in the hallways and the elevators and things like that. I don't know that, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I don't know the business operations or the building's operations. And he called this other person in and he synthesized everything that I was telling him along with the information he was getting from others who were actually working on these issues. And then he came to his conclusions. So I've always found him to be curious, very decisive. Uh, sometimes he went along with my recommendations and other times he didn't and um, um, just a, a really interesting synthesizer of information. If uh, we came up with X, he wanted to know why we couldn't do 2X or 3X. You know, why did we have to do it that way, why not this way? Always creative, sometimes the ideas worked, other times we had to explain why they wouldn't work. Um, he might challenge us on when we push back and we'd have a, a healthy dialogue on it and then if he agreed with us, he would back off and if he didn't agree with us, he would ask us to move forward with his direction as is the right of a guy who was elected to be president of the United States. I thought the Abraham Accords were kind of a, mi a minor miracle while looking, watching from the outside. It's certainly not something I was expecting to see. Um, and then I subsequently thought to myself, there's a kind of a genius to it in a way, in the sense that it doesn't actually really requi require the U.S. to stay as the broker the Abraham Accords don't need the United States to continue to flourish. If the countries involved, and hopefully other countries want to, they can grow them out in amazing ways. Having the U.S. on board and encouraging them and convening is certainly helpful, but they don't need the U.S. One of the ways we did damage until recently is President Biden's um, distance or perhaps disrespect of some of our key allies, including Saudi Arabia and even the United Arab Emirates. When you disrespect your allies and you let them think to themselves, maybe we can't rely on the United States anymore, that weakens the foundations of the relationship between the U.S. and its allies, and therefore it weakens things associated with the U.S., such as the Abraham Accords. I think President Biden has tried to turn a page when he went to visit Saudi Arabia, and I think he did turn a page with Saudi Arabia. I think there's many more pages to turn in that chapter, but he did the right thing going there. and. Hopefully we're past that. But we still have the Iran deal, right? If he signs an Iran deal that's similar to the Iran deal that was signed under the Obama administration, perhaps something worse, um, it's not gonna be longer and stronger by all accounts, which is what they promised us, but it seems it's gonna be similar or worse. That's also going to potentially rock the foundations of the region in many unhelpful ways. So I think back, you know, when people were upset about Jerusalem, the Jerusalem announcement by President Trump, the recognition as, it, as being the capital of Israel, that wasn't rocking the foundations of safety, right? That wasn't potentially putting people at risk. That might have put, you know, a bunch of crazy nuts to start some negative activity and try to create terror attacks or whatever. I don't want to make light of that. But that wasn't going to rock the foundations of safety and security in the region. The Iran deal will, and I'm a little bit surprised that the world went so crazy when President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital, but doesn't recognize the real tremendous security threat to the region, both nuclear and terror, from an Iranian deal with this murderous Iranian regime. And that's how the U.S. could play a negative role and undermine not only the Abraham Accords, but our relationships with our key allies. And the impact of that could be tremendous. I mean, you think we have oil problems now with what's happening in Ukraine, you know, between Ukraine and Russia. Imagine the kind of problems we're going to have 
if stability and security in the Middle East are rocked with a deal that doesn't make sense with Iran. And worse, if there is a deal and then Iran takes action through that deal, what's going to happen in, whether it's in a year from now or 10 years from now? It's a very, very dangerous game. You know, based on your, you know, tenure, you know, how is Iran ultimately viewed in the region you know, by these different actors? The countries of the region view Iran as strong, strategic, but a tremendous threat. Uh, I think that Iran wants nothing more than to destroy Israel and to take over those other countries and, and put their religious ideology into all of those Muslim countries and then eventually attack the United States and maybe thereafter Europe. I certainly think that Israel understands that and I think the leadership in the region would probably say I'm not very wrong on that point. Having said that, seeing what's happening with the Biden administration, you're now seeing the region be pragmatic, right? They're de redeveloping ties with Iran. They're um, potentially exchanging ambassadors again. What's their choice? I know people are complaining about it, but if I were sitting with the leader of the UAE or Saudi, I would say not a bad idea because the reality is if Biden is going to sign a deal and we're going to be left with this threat, you could either hope for the best or try to at least make it better under these new circumstances.